presentación de esta sesión. Eh, gracias a todos por estar por aquí. Eh, en esta ocasión, el, el servicio de interpretación en español estará, uh, estará a mi cargo, este, porque nuestro intérprete no pudo llegar, pero entonces, eh, si alguien necesita la interpretación, podrá hacerlo eh, trabajándolo en el botón de interpretación abajo. So, uh, just uh, telling everybody that we're going to have uh, a simultaneous interpretation to Spanish in case you need it. Um, they, you're going to be able to do it clicking on the button down below. Um, Hector Villarreal, I'm going to be one of the, your co-facilitators today alongside with Alex, my partner in geekiness crime. Because, yeah, <laughs> we have to admit it. We are geeks. And marie Elin, she's crime. geek too. I know her. Good. Yes, you are. <laughs> um, yeah, well, so um, today we're going to talk about carbon footprint meaning that uh, we're going to talk about uh, climate change. And the base hypothesis, uh, the foundation for this uh, webinar is that we believe that climate change is real and accelerated by human activity. I know that not everyone believes that, but that's the uh, statement and the foundation for this webinar. And we are not going to debate that, just, just saying that. Um, so once you believe in that, you say, well, let's fucking do something about it. And that's one of the reasons that we have created this webinar. You know that we are in the middle of a series of uh, different webinars on hot topics about facilitation. And this one is a little bit different. Uh, the previous ones, we were sharing a lot of stuff based on our experience and expertise. And this one is much more experimental. And I'm going to show you an initiative that I'm just starting. And I hope to get a lot of feedback from you. So it's much more experimental. We are not going to deliver a lot of content and expertise and experience. But I hope that... Uh, we're going to have some great discussions and that we're going to have a great ideation and that we're going to launch something useful. So that's the idea for today. And are you ready to do that with us? You can do thumb up. That's the most sophisticated online voting tool that I know, thumb up, thumb down. And hello, everyone. Welcome on board to all the other ones that are joining right now. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to ask the sempiternel question. Which is, can you see my screen? <laughs> so, slideshow, Hacker, can you see my screen? Yes, it works. Okay. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we're going to do a nice melter. No, we cannot do that. <laughs> and we don't want to melt the ice. So, well, we're going to do a nice non-melter just to get to know each other a little bit. Then we're going to share some data, just some orders of magnitude so that we know a little bit the difference between the carbon footprint of a post-it note and the carbon fit footprint of a video feed, just to see the orders of magnitude. Of course, it's not a comprehensive presentation about that, just to show you some stuff, and then we'll have some homework to do. Then I'm going to present you this initiative that I would like to launch about designing low carbon workshop, but it's not only about designing the workshop, you'll see. Then there is a big part of this webinar that's going to be a large group brainstorming, all of us brainstorming ideas that we would be able to implement in all our different collaborative workshops. And then we're going to debrief all together, sharing what we thought about the initiative, the ideas that we have for the next step. If we want to do some next steps, uh, it's going to be very open. So this is the program for today. Hector, should I add anything to that? No, Hector is doing the translation, so yeah. 
I'm not going to ask you too many questions because it's difficult to do both the, the, the transcription and everything. Okay, so um, let's do the ice non-melter now. And uh, we're going to use uh, storms for that. I know that a lot of you, uh, you were at the previous webinar, but not all of you. So I'm going to show you exactly how storms work to do that. Uh, soon, I'm going to be sharing a link in the chat window of Zoom. When you click on that link, you should be able to see something like that. And you're going to use the guest account if you don't have any account, or if you have an account because you're a pro workshop facilitator with Storms, you can use it. If you don't, you don't even need to get to, to give me an email, and you just put your first name, for example, Ben. Okay, I'm ready. And you should see the first activity for today, which is called Let's Not Melt the Ice. You click on it, very easy. The question is, why are you here today? And please answer as a question, maybe highlighting the connection between the science of workshopping, the job of a workshop facilitator and your connection to climate change and why you're interested into this topic. The way to do that in Storms, very easy. You add card with a plus button. You write your sentence here and the way I did it, I don't remember how I set it up. I think that you will be able to see the ideas from everybody. No, first you're gonna, it's gonna be a surprise. First, you're gonna be able to see only your, your own ideas. If you're speaking Spanish, you can write down in Spanish. If you're speaking French, well, try to do it in English uh, <laughs> and uh, as you like. So let's take a couple of minutes. Why are you here today? I have the first two, first two uh, contributions. Mm. And maybe for those who have already, I'm going to leave you the ability to now see the ideas from everyone. Okay, so now you should be able to see and start reading the different contributions. Hector, can you confirm that we can see the contribution from everybody now? Yeah, one says yes. Okay, um, so a lot of you want to learn stuff, learn to reduce carbon footprint, learn more arguments that will help me promote online work as carbon reduction strategy, have fun and learn from the others, learn from all of you about this important theme. Yeah, learn to the, uh, more about the world of facilitation and how storms and AI technology are disrupting the industry. So that won't be the central topic, storms and AI, uh, but you're gonna see some stuff. Okay, um, so I'm go just going to do something. Uh, if you can look at the shared screen, I'm just going to have a look if the AI is able to detect some theme. So, uh, we have some stuff about eco conscious facilitation. Uh, sustainable innovation in workshops. Well, this one is the same, but in Spanish. 
facilitation and learning. First IF webinar. Yeah, there is a little bit of IF in it. Be a participant for once. Yeah, I know this one. I know that it's great when you're a facilitator to be able to be a participant at some time and just relax and have someone else do the, the animation. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. Curious about climate change. A few clients who cares about protecting the environment and I'd like to design with their values in mind. Oh, this one, you're gonna see that. I'm gonna speak about that. Okay, so um, thanks a lot for all uh, these uh, first contributions. Um, it was a very quick uh, uh, icebreaker and don't worry, you will be able to speak with other people uh, during, uh, uh, during this webinar. Uh, but first, let's get back to the presentation. And um, before we dive into the collaboration part and the initiative, uh, we thought with Hector that it would be a good idea to have a few a few data points just to understand the orders of magnitude of the thing that we are going to talk about. So Hector, would you like to um, to start um, your presentation? Sure. Thank you. I, I will be saying my part in English and immediately translating to Spanish. I'm going to try to be quick because we don't okay. have an official translator today. So if we can go to the next one, uh, Alex, it's it's important for us to understand what's a carbon footprint because that's the what we hear and Every, all the time, so it's a it's a measure of, of our impact in terms of the output of carbon monoxide, dioxide, and methane, and it's expressed in metric tons per year. We all humans we create this even th even some more, some less, depending on where we are, what we do, what we consume. But it's important for us to just understand that that's like the legal measure, the official measure in terms of the the, the impact on the environment, right? That as it does changes the comp position of our natural habitat. If we continue to the next one, thanks. Uh, let's imagine an event. What's the output in terms of carbon footprint of, of a workshop? If we think about transportation, normally transportation is the biggest impact. And oh, thank you, Juan. Juan is gonna, uh, is, uh, wants to help us as an interpreter. Much appreciate I'll do that in just a second. Yeah, that way we can go faster. I don't have to repeat everything. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. Interpretation is now started, and you can hear it in Spanish. Pueden escuchar en español la interpretación ahí que nos va a estar ayudando, Juan. So, uh, transportation normally, in terms of footprint of workshops, that's the biggest, uh, um, in, uh, in terms of events, that's the biggest uh, uh, impact in terms of carbon footprint, as you can see, flying from one city to the other, just driving around to get to a conference, to a workshop, it, it has an impact on their environment. Uh, what, and of what, course, what's, it's, just what's missing is the train, which is way less emission intensive yeah, than the others. I have to yeah. say, I, I was very American based because North America is like more, less public transportation, more like individual. I do have to say that in Europe, for example, yeah, it's uh, it's it's more much less actually is the the least uh, amount in terms of transportation. And if we go to the next one, the next uh, is would be this this the the materials, the the space where you uh, the electricity of the space or the where you are doing a workshop. And this is an approximate. They're not they're uh, the most official one is the one printed sheet of paper. That's where we can we could find a lot of resources and they go around that it costs around 10 grams of CO2. There was, there's no official both post-its or, or, or the others, but so there's like, uh, there's like uh, both of them are, we got them from people that do some calculations and introduce the calculations on the website. We do have a, uh, all of that information if you need it in the, at the back end, if, if you wanted to check it out. And now, if we think about uh, virtual, virtual facilitation, because that's something that we know, now are, we're doing, and there's also a cost for that. Yeah, so doing things online. Yes, uh, yes, Jimena, the, the flight is calculated per passenger. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's actually, per, it's per passenger. Yeah, so um, 
in, in, with, in terms of email um, virtual post-its, that's 0.07 grams of CO2. Uh, a weekly meeting with six participants watching in high definition for one hour, that's 50 grams. So um, if, if there's a, um, I would say, if, if, if there's one very big uh, argument, in fact, yeah. uh, argument of in favor of uh, virtual workshops is definitely the impact on the environment. Uh, and the other thing that is interesting is that the same meeting that is 50 grams of CO2, if you, if all the participants put their video feed, it falls down to 1.5 gram if it's audio only. And here, I think, is the, the challenge to keep that engagement at the same level with or without the, the camera, absolutely. That's and we'll speak about the criteria of success uh, for any, uh, a low-carbon initiative just in a couple of slides. Yeah. So one of the things that we wanted to ask is if, or, for, or uh, if we go to the next one, Alex, is that have we become a, a posted and flip chart centered profession? So it's like when we think facilitation, we, and automatically we think in terms of flip charts, in terms of posted of markers. And we, know, we, we go and we use, and we have all of these great uh, post-its that they're used for, for half an hour, then they're thrown away and, and nothing, nothing happens or sometimes it does happen, but it depends. So I think that's one of the things that we need to rethink when we're thinking about carbon footprint as well. What is the best way to do it? And, and for example, and the thing is the medium that you use changes the way your participants interact as well. So if, if you are going with small ideas or, or simple exercises where you ask for people to, for input, well, they use a post-it and that's good, but sometimes the post-it is not enough for them to put their ideas in. So if we go to the next one, Alex. So you sometimes go, uh, yeah. So so sometimes the, the medium that you use, yeah, let's go to the next one. It changes. Sometimes you even give them a flip chart and, and participants can go and do these diagrams and do all these big images and, we, and you give them a flip chart. So the thing is you have to think in terms of the, the usage of the materials that, because the medium is the message as Marshall McLuhan would say. Um, the, the, the medium that you use as a facilitator for the participants to put their ideas in, it changes the, the, the outcome. It, it impacts the pe what people think and how they think and how they work. So this is just a, an, an introduction for, for you to, okay, let's think about in a way, in a different way. And how would we go into proposing a low carbon workshop initiative? And, and that's... Uh, what Alex has in store for us today. Uh, yeah, so f thanks a lot, Hector, for, again, uh, we just wanted to make a quick overview on, on some orders of magnitude. And if one of the things that we would need to do is to gather much more data and to double check the data, well, at least the orders of magnitude, we don't we don't mind if it's 1.1 or 1.2. We we want to see where uh, the, si the, where is the big impact. Yeah. So um, this is the last presentation, and then the main uh, meat of this webinar is going to be a brainstorming all together uh, uh, about some stuff. Here, I'm introducing something that I'm thinking is quite ambitious, is uh, an approach and an initiative for all of us so that as workshop facilitator, not only we can reduce the carbon footprint of the event and sessions that we organize, but we use that also as an opportunity to raise awareness about climate change and the consequences of that. So let me show you what uh, I have in mind. Um, so it's an initi initiative and first of all, the goals and all of them are very important. If we do that, we do that because we want to lower the carbon footprint and this is a tangible benefit. And we wanna do that because uh, we wanna be part of a solution and not part of a problem. And at the same time, 
The idea is to use that as an opportunity to raise awareness among participants. That way, not only you have lower the carbon footprint of your workshop, but you create a little bit of a viral thing about doing stuff about climate change. And this is an intangible uh, benefit. Of course, we want to do that without harming the quality of our work, right? We want to keep our clients happy. So at least we need to maintain the quality of the deliverables and the level of experience for the participants. Uh, and maybe we can also find some stuff that can also increase the quality at the same time. That would be the raise the bar goal. The basic principle of these initiatives is that we don't do that alone. We do that with our clients. Okay. Uh, we want them to, we want to embark them. We want to embark the participants too. And it's the only way that we can make it work. And we don't want to look as eco extremist. So you're going to see there is a process that goes from selling your workshop to debriefing the workshop with the client. Uh, we're going to, so I have invented, quote, a framework for that. It's very inspired by, some, by, by, by things that already exist. Um, uh, so you're going to see that. And also there are some tools to help with ideating uh, the different uh, ways of uh, lowering the carbon footprint of our workshops. And there's going to be a card deck, templates for Storms, Miro, Session Lab, everything that we can do. Why? Because the ambition is that it's not only all of that, uh, I want to build a guide and I'd like to have a community to uh, be empowered about all of that and to create something much better than what I can do to, uh, uh, alone. And uh, so that we can promote and create a viral effect about that because this is the best way to have an impact and be part of the solution and not the problem. So this is a very bold ambition. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that. Uh, the tools that we mentioned are absolutely not digital uh, focused, uh, Lorraine. Uh, you'll see that there will be a card deck, so it's going to be a paper, a low-tech card deck. So it's going to be, it's, it can be used very, it's not a tool focused. It's tool agnostic. Uh, there was a question from, from Lorraine. This is why I'm answering. Um, so this is the process. So it starts at selling, um, if we do something about a uh, carbon footprint, we shouldn't be shy about it. We should promote the approach. We should make it a unique selling point. It should be part of your branding. And this way, not only uh, you, it's going to be easier to do it once you have the job, but also it's going to attract the right client to you. So I think it's a win-win uh, thing. Second thing during the design, this one, this part might be the most important one. During the scope meeting, uh, the scope meeting is the first meeting where you ask a lot of questions to frame the problem and understand the need of your client. Well, uh, you need to have a set of questions dedicated to sustainability and understand the scope, the context, so that you see what you can um, inject into the design. And then there is this ideation activity about the thing that you can do to lower the footprint with the client. And you do that during prep, prep time and try to inject a few future participants because that way you're going to be, it's going to be easier to engage them. During the workshop, you're going to facilitate that. Each one of the choice is the opportunity to explain why you have done what you have done to lower the footprint. One example. If you have made the choice to reuse the post-it pads from another workshop, you know the ones that are not, not beautiful in, 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 because they have been used already, a little corner on the edge. Well, you put them on the table and you explain, yes, they are ugly, but they were used in a previous workshop and we have done that because blah, 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 climate change, footprint, et cetera. And finally, in the debrief, uh, after the session, communicate 
the main report will be about the topic of your workshop, of course, but have at least a little paragraph about the impact that have been made thanks to the different adaptation that was that were brainstormed during the design phase. So that's that's the main idea. And the basic principle is embark the client. So in order to do this uh, little activity in the design phase, uh, I want to design a card deck. And this card deck will be based on a framework. And we're going to have some cards that I call the framework cards. And you're going to see it's very inspired, heavily inspired by something that is called Scamper. If you don't know that, you can Google that. You'll see a lot of resources about Scamper. And it's a way to ask questions. What can we replace? What can we reduce? What can we reuse? What can you recycle? Both are different. What can, you, what can we reinforce? Uh, do more of it. And what should we remove? All of that with the goal of reducing the carbon footprint. And we're going to ask these questions for each one of the components of our workshop. Location, transport, materials, content, waste, activities, layout. For example, what can you uh, reuse uh, when it comes to food and beverage? That's one question. If you ask that, maybe you're going to have some new ideas of things that you can do. And that's exactly the way to use it. You would put the different cards. So if it's low-tech cards, you would put that on the table or on the floor. And uh, you would uh, use the matrix. It's a, a simple technique that is called ide um, ideation matrix. And for example, again, you put food and beverage, you put reuse. Well, you're going to have the idea of creating an icebreaker about bringing your own mug. And you ask participants to bring their own mug, and then they have to share about their mug, and you create the icebreaker with that. And then you share a little bit of data about the tons of waste that are generated by this um, um, one, um, one time use um, uh, oh, uh, cups. Containers. Yeah. yeah. And you can do that again and again. And it's a great way to be able to ideate hundreds of ideas very quickly. And you're going to see that because we're going to use that tool exactly uh, for our brainstorm. Um, and again, Lorraine, uh, you could do that the low-tech way or the high-tech way. Uh, the good thing is that it works in both contexts. Um, the problem with that, uh, if we go here, is that you need first the client to agree to take a little bit of time, 30 minutes, 45 minutes to do that. And maybe it's not going to be possible. So alternatively, I'm thinking that we should also design some solution cards. So cards with ready-made ideas, and then you just have to show them to the client, and he can pick some of them and say, OK, we want to do the bring your own mug icebreaker. And by the way, this card was generated by Storm's AI. I really like the drawing. So uh, this is also something that I would like to do. and. Uh, this is a call for volunteer to make this concept of the card game that is already uh, today that is on a PowerPoint slide to make it a reality that we can design some nice cards and that we can distribute the PDF for free, distribute real cards for a little price, uh, and have a guide about using them, et cetera, et cetera. By the way, this framework could work for any kind of workshop about brainstorming how to reduce the carbon footprint of pa, 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 whatever. It's very generic. The thing that is not generic are the green cards, these ones. But the framework in itself can be totally generic. So uh, what time is it? 32. Hey, Hector, I'm only two minutes late. So that's the end of the presentation. Yeah, well, it's a it's an inside joke between me and Hector, and maybe the ones that were in the previous webinar sessions, is that I always speak too much during the presentation time. So, 
I hope that uh, you uh, liked uh, the idea of what you see. It was a very quick presentation of the initiative, but I would like that we spent most of our time trying to use that framework so that we can get a feel of it. Is it working? Is it not working? And also that we produce something at the end of this webinar. I want to produce as many ideas of ways to reduce the carbon footprint and at the same time, raise the awareness uh, with the participants and at the same time, without sacrificing the quality uh, of the output of the deliverables and the experience of your workshop. Does it make sense? Thumb up, thumb down. Yeah, I don't see all, and maybe on the chat, maybe a little message to tell me if it, all that makes sense. Ah, yes, maybe we can use the uh, framework from Edouard de Bono. Yeah, I, I guess there are plenty of possibilities in terms of framework. Um, so yeah, let's, um, Hector, if you agree, definitely yes. Good, okay. So what I would like to do right now is that we're gonna start uh, uh, brainstorming and I'm gonna show you the final result that I'm looking for. So look at my screen. I'm gonna activate the workshop and I'm gonna go back here. So at the end, we're gonna work in small groups, but at the end, the first part, we're gonna stay all together. But at the end, I would like to have, uh, I don't know, how many are we right now? About 20. So I'd like to have at least five or six uh, very detailed actions that we could uh, implement to lower the carbon footprint and raise the awareness. Exactly like the one that I did uh, last week, the bring your own mug icebreaker. So uh, it's going to be a, a, a small description and also have a look at all the blockers and the way to unblock the blockers, how to make it have more impact and how to make it easier to implement. And you're going to do that in small groups, trying to make the best idea possible. But before doing that, we're going to diverge and we want to generate as many seeds of ideas as necessary. And we're going to use storms for that. You see that I have prepared a board. On the left side, you have all the components of a typical workshop. And maybe there are more. If you think that there is something else you can add, you, you have access uh, you, uh, to the plus button here. Uh, it is sorted randomly so that you don't start thinking about the same one, all of you. And then we have uh, uh, six cells for each one of the um, letter of the framework. And I see that Hector is translating them. So we have the replace. So can we? what can we replace uh, from something to something else to lower the carbon impact and raise awareness? What can we reuse? And you have this example of coffee mugs instead of having uh, mugs that you throw at the end of a workshop, you ask people to bring their mugs or to reuse the post-it pads. What can we uh, do more of? Maybe we can uh, use reusable uh, low-tech tools such as CAD, CAD decks. Maybe we can use more digital tools even for in-person workshops because we've seen that a virtual post-it notes is very small into carbon footprint. What can we reduce? What can we recycle? And finally, maybe there are some stuff that we should remove. Uh, I put you here some shared slides. Okay, so I can open it for you. Uh, uh, in, and, and you have all the data points. And I'm sorry, we don't have a lot, but at least a few data points to help your thinking. And the idea is that in the first five minutes, you add as many post-it notes as you want and you know the rules of divergence, you are experienced facilitators, all of you, no idea is bad at this point. It's only seeds of ideas and we want as many seeds of ideas as we can. It's gonna be in silence first, all of you working on your side. 
and then we're going to do some voting and then we're going to work in breakout to develop some of these ideas okay if you have some questions you can ask questions either out loud or in the chat box and uh, also maybe if you don't know storms maybe you are still into the icebreaker so you need to get back by hitting the little house button and then get into the collaborative workshop okay are we good thumb up if you're good i want to see as many ideas as possible So the idea is to connect a component of a workshop from the left column to a verb from one of the other areas and try to ideate from that. So we have the first one, which is bring home back food rather than relying on catering. So it was a combination with food and beverage and replace. Las credenciales con los nombres de los y las participantes. I don't understand this one. It's about the, the name tags. Ah, the name tags, yeah. Recycle the name tags, okay. Or reuse. Replace uh, stickies and flip charts by digital tools. Bring your own water bottles. Hacker, if you could read the one in uh, in Spanish. So Hector, um, reduce the, the reduce the use of markers, uh, uh, carton paper, and uh, uh, flip charts. Hector, uh, I see that you put an idea as a comment in the materials card. Uh, what you need to do is to add cards inside the different areas of the board, not as a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, got it. For hub site, gather participants to reduce the number of vehicles, bringing them to the session. Reuse the half use post it tax. Totally agree on this one. I've done it already. Plastic, remove plastic bottles, remove printouts. Avoid or eliminate, eliminate packed foods for the coffee breaks. Replace flip charts with whiteboards. Photograph the whiteboard debriefing notes. Reuse materials used for simulation, playing cards, cups, string. Uh, I'm going to use that as a springboard. Do not offer the Lego bits. Alejandra, uh, I saw that you put a comment in process. 
you should really put it as a card in one of the, the other areas. Five minutes are up, Alex. Like to yeah, we we'll, we have still some ideas coming in, so. Just time checking. Yeah, I know, I know. Ah. Good job. But we are not too late. Effective do. calculation of food and break snacks. Yeah, the problem is I like when they overcalculate snacks because at the end of a workshop, when I'm tired, I can put a lot of the snacks in my bag. <laughs> Don't we all? Uh, oh, three bottles of I mean, are, are we going to fit in my bag for the trip? <laughs> especially if your workshop is in the Gulf state, you should well, see those coffee breaks are amazing. Yeah, really? Actually, you can go to natural, give uh, 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 carrots and, and fruit and that kind of like uh, uh, locally sourced. Uh, yeah, I think that we can do that. I don't know, where would you put that one, Alex? Uh, uh, locally sourced uh, food? Replace. Replace internationally so local. locally sourced food, maybe. Or reinforce local catering and local products. Kind of like, kind of like a farmer's market kind of spirit. Mm -hmm. So I had a feedback from someone who told me that it was difficult to brainstorm and ideate with me talking all the time. So I'm going to give a little bit of silence. Hein, Lorraine? <laughs> no problem. Yes, it's me. I, I tried to do it just for you, but... <laughs> no, it's not a problem. I, I mean... You, I don't know if I'm the have... only one. Right. Yeah. Uh, there are two two schools on that on that you know uh but let's let's do it silently for um, a couple of minutes 250 50. silence means no music thank you it's not me Okay. Let's take three more minutes. I see that you still have some ideas.
in the meantime, before we finish, Haker, can you prepare some breakouts by language? Uh, we're going to do something new. We're going to do the voting in breakouts so that people can talk casually. Uh, we'll do the, the the voting during the breakouts. Yeah. Got it. And then do some other breakouts for the developing of the ideas. Got it. Just to create a different dynamic. The polls are on. Okay. Please tell us if you want to be an English speaking breakout or a Spanish one. Remember, if you don't choose, you're gonna stay. You're gonna be stuck with us in the plenary, and I, and I and, and I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> Favor de responder la la, uh, la encuesta que tienen en frente para poder identificar si van a trabajar en grupos en español o en inglés. Fourteen already responded, so I think we're good to go, Alex. Okay, so I'm gonna. Um, I don't normally do that, but I want to, I want to test this dynamic is that, uh, we're going to put you in different breakouts of how many people, uh, Hector? We're going to go into three or four. Okay. Three or four people. You're going to have to do individual voting. Okay. Uh, each one of you is going to just, vote. Just, indiv let let me just uh, activate the interpretation. Yeah. So. You're going to do individual voting, but you're going to be in breakout, so you can comment out loud uh, with all the participants and have casual discussions on what you like, what you're voting on, uh, what you don't like and not voting, okay? Uh, but I still would like you to actively uh, work on a board to indicate the uh, ideas that, are, that you think are the most promising. I'm, uh, my screen, I'm going to share it so that you can see how the voting work works. So you should be able, which screen are you seeing? It's not highlighting my screen, just checking that I'm sharing the right one. It was using the facilitator. Yeah, we have the facilitator control. Okay, so um, I'm going to move to the next step. Please, if you are uh, uh, writing a card right now, please send it even if it is not finished. Otherwise, it won't be saved. And I'm going to go to the voting step. So as you can see right now, everything is, uh, is put uh, randomly uh, on and you don't see the areas anymore. And it's going to be a different random order for each one of you. I want to, you to have a look at all of that. And as soon as you see an idea that you think is promising, so it's the seed of an idea, okay? It means that even if it's not perfect or even if it's quite uh, bancal, uh, I don't know the word in English, but it doesn't look right, think about if you develop it, maybe it's going to be a great idea. So you click on the idea and you give it up to three points. If you put one point, it's like, I like it. Two points, I super like it. And three points, I mega like it. Okay. So it's, it's a way to indicate which ideas you think are the most promising. Okay. Though you have to go quite quickly through the different uh, ideas, you won't have the time to do everything. And at the same time, if you see something that you really like, say it out loud to the other participants. I don't mind if there is an influence bias. I want to create a kind of conversation in your breakout. So now I'm going to give you, there is a question. So the votation is individual but the conversation is through the group and you can give your advice and speak about what you're seeing. And, and, and you can even try to influence them and to ask them to vote on an idea. Uh, uh, there is a number on each one of the ideas. If you see two identical twins, 
you vote on one of this idea. We don't have to do the merging of the uh, ideas that are similar. We're going to do that later after the session. So it's not a problem. Just vote on one of them. OK, so let's go to the breakouts. Can you do that? How much time? Can you confirm? Yeah, five minutes for, okay, for voting. Ahead. And then we come back in plenary for the next step. Oh, pasamos. Perfecto. Listo. Non-Spanish idea speakers can't really vote on ideas in Spanish, right? Hmm. Okay. If you can, if you're French, you can understand Spanish. <laughs> Sorry, just send them into the breakouts. Question, Alex. Yeah. Randomizing. Do you, does the does the machine randomizes the same for everyone, or I have my own randomization as a participant, different yeah. from the other group members? Yeah, okay. different. Oh, that's quite a challenge to work as a group. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As we were talking through these, because um, my one hundred six wasn't on the bottom um, that um, was mentioned in our. Yeah, group. this is this is my fault. I improvised because I wanted the voting to be alone. So I randomized and then I decided, oh, I'm going to change that. Let's do that in breakouts. <laughs> and this is why you had this problem, I guess. Um, no anyway, I think you, you were able to vote and I'm going to show you the result of the voting now. But Alex, that was a good learning actually, because if I was to do this again in a breakout, I would not randomize. Yeah, sure. Sure, I should have done it that way. Um, so here we have the top uh, voted ideas, uh, for example, the one about the coffee mug. Seven of you voted on it and six of you put three points, meaning that you think it's a really good idea. Uh, if I go to the next one, uh, the next one, by the way, is very similar to the Third one, say no to single use plastic bat water bottles. And the other one, which is avoid, oh no, just change. Then we have avoid or eliminate packed food for the coffee breaks. We have a lot of things about food and beverage. That's funny. It was oh, also yeah, this... for expense associated with um, facilitated sessions. Mm. That's where a lot of the waste goes, actually. Mm -hmm. From what I see. So I think I see some comment in Spanish saying that you didn't have enough time for the uh, exercise, right? There's never enough. Whoever said they have enough time. Yeah, well, I this one I, I knew obviously is just it's just a simple exercise that we do all of us. It's just to get a rough idea of things that are coming out. It's nothing final. Again, I wanted you to have a feel about the kind of thing that we can do with this framework. So don't take that as a final output that's going to be published somewhere very, very seriously, okay? Uh, it's a first brainstorming. And really the idea for me is to give you uh, um, uh, the motivation maybe to go further so that we can work together in uh, in having a, a real list of activities, et cetera, et cetera. So right now it's just a first run. It's a prototype. It's a, a first iteration. It's a draft. So. Don't worry if you didn't have time to look at all the ideas and do the voting uh, appropriately, okay? Hope it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense, Alex. And this is very powerful. This, these charts, this chart, this way of displaying the information is super powerful. And because I'm double clicking on each one of these lines and I'm getting a sense not only of the points, but number of people that voted. Yeah. And balance between the votes. So so this is this is very interesting for analysis as a facility. Yeah. yeah, if you have a lot of time, yeah, it's very interesting. And I can even ask the group to comment on their own analysis of these yeah. data. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you had a full workshop and time to do that, we would spend a lot of time analyzing all the these ideas and discussing together. What what I would like now, and again, 
just to move on and to get a feel of this kind of workshop and what we can do, I would like that all of that are great seeds of ideas and they would deserve a lot more attention. But let's pick a few of them and try to develop them in, in breakouts, okay? Um, do you have more information on static charge whiteboard sheets like wizard wool in your flip, flip chart? So yeah, well, I, I don't have specific information about that, but I know that it's a great alternative. So if, so if you think about replacing one material by another one, if this is an opportunity to, um, uh, to win a little bit of uh, carbon footprint. So let me show you what I would like to do in the next step. So, and I'd like to have your advice on how to, um, there is one way to do that. Uh, you see that we have all these ideas that are now sorted by score. So bring their own mug first, say no to single use plastic water, second, et cetera, et cetera. And now if you click on a card, you have the ability to develop this idea, okay? You can brainstorm on uh, what could make this idea fail and how to prevent it, how to make this idea even more impactful, more innovative, more fun maybe also, and how to make it uh, easier to implement. You can also assess the idea to get a, to get a sense on how good it is. Uh, uh, on the carbon footprint, do you agree that it will have a significant impact? Maybe strongly agree, disagree, agree, strongly agree. So depending on your assessment, you might try to work on uh, how to give it more impact or not. So this is the kind of work that I would like you to do in breakouts. Now, so that instead of having only seeds of ideas, we have at least three or five very well-developed ideas uh, that will be the start of some recommendations that we could make. And again, then I'm going to ask for volunteers to go much further on the initiative, create a guide, the card deck, and stuff like that. But for today, let's make of our, our ambition to develop two, three, four, five of these ideas into something more robust, more innovative, more fun, more whatever. Um, we can do it in several ways. One of the way, tell me what you think. Maybe we can divide you in breakouts by language. And you decide on the one card that you would like to, to work together. Uh, but you have to decide together and then you have to agree. And then you develop it. The other thing I can do is that I can put one, two, three, four, five on each one of the cards. And then we create as many breakouts as this number of cards. And breakout one would work on card number one. And then when we open the breakout, you decide on the one you go. Like an open space, if you know uh, this, uh, you go into the discussion you would like to go. So how would you like to do it? Either I send you in breakout and you decide in your breakout, or you... Um, you uh, you we open one breakout per card and you decide in which one you'd like to go. Second, yeah, okay. So Hector, we need to coordinate on this one. Maybe you can leave uh, the transcript uh, the translation. So I'm going to create ten, and maybe some of you are going to be alone in your room, just like an open space. I'm going to create six spaces. The first one is about bring their own coffee mug and it's going to be in breakout number one. The second one is going to be about plastic water bottle. The third one is about eliminating the packed food and coffee breaks. Then no pet bottle water, uh, very similar, so I'm not going to put this one. Then uh, we had one in Spanish, would be number four. One, two, three, four. Plastic bottle, same. Uh, here, five. And let's go up to six and seven, like, 
like seven. So Hector, we need to create seven breakouts and leave the ability for people to choose the breakout. And the idea when you will be in the breakout is that you discuss on how to make this idea better. So what you can do is that you can also look at the other ideas and incorporate them into the, the one that you are working on, okay? So maybe uh, the one about uh, eliminate packed food, you garner, uh, put the idea of a locally sourced food in it. And when you click on it, you know, you can edit and change the, the title to make it better. Okay. So are we good, Hector? Did you understand all, all of you what you are trying to achieve? So if you want to go uh, and uh, work on bring their own mug, you go into room number one, et cetera, et cetera. And Hector, you tell me when you're ready. You're good? So ready, yeah. Okay, so let's go. Las salas están abiertas. The rooms are open. You can choose whichever room you prefer to join into the conversation. Just remember to go in and just, uh, uh, as you have the conversation, you can just put in, change, adapt the idea. Sí, en, en español, vamos a ir en grupos pequeños. <clears throat> Eh, para trabajar eh, la, las siete eh, temas que como que, que tuvieron más votos sí ustedes pueden eh, compartir y la idea es que hacer esta las ideas lo más robusta posible para que se puedan aplicar para esta idea que tenemos de pues, crear este kit para que de poder trabajar con el cliente sobre el tema de sustentabilidad pues cómo podemos dar más herramientas más ideas más argumentos no al momento de trabajar ya están abiertas las salas ustedes pueden se seleccionar y pueden empezar a, a trabajar. También pueden trabajar solos en un tema. Si un tema les apasiona, ustedes pueden trabajar y editar la información directo en la, en la tarjeta de Storms. So there is someone who is alone in room number one. So if you want to join Benoit. There is also someone who is alone in room number three and alone in room number seven. Uh -huh. So Fabrice, Miguel, Brian. Um, Hector, I can go either one English or Spanish. Pero tú, tú seleccionas, eh, Miguel Ángel, tú tienes que seleccionar cuál, qué, en qué temática quieres trabajar. Okay. O sea, tú abres abre, abre la sala y nada más este, seleccionas en cualquier con quién quieres trabajar. Gracias. O bueno, con la temática, pues. So we might have people in English speaking and... Fabrice, you want to join, uh, tú quieres rejoindre una de... Ah, pues es fe. You know what, uh, Hector, I'm going to work with, uh, ah, no, okay, there are two of them now. Hola, Maite, bienvenido. Welcome back, everyone. That was nice exercise. So, did you make a revolution in 15 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, did we solve the problem of climate change in 15 minutes? All good, all done. Okay. Fraternity. Oh, you needed five more minutes, right? <laughs> uh, can I Elena. talk? Please? Yes, of course. Of course. We didn't solve the problem of climate change, but we are more conscious about it. Totally. Ex excellent. So 
Uh, I know the XS5 is very tight, very quick, uh, fast pace. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed and you enjoyed your um, conversation. What I really would like, and it's a very difficult exercise that you're going to do. Uh, I want a spokesperson for each group, and you're going to tell me only one thing. It's going to be one sentence, 10 seconds, what you prefer about your idea. So you tell me, my idea is that, and I really like the fact that blah, blah, blah. Okay, can we do that? Benoit, no luck, I know you, so I feel the first one to start. <laughs> yeah, of course. So I was did you try to do the mug? Yes, yes, we did the mug and uh, it was quite interesting. So thank you, Miguel, for that. Uh, there was a lot of things that we talked about. I was just trying to find one. Um, the, um, we work on getting people aware of the impact of that mug. And we try to have, and I'm putting two things in one, but I can't. Uh, uh, we try to make it fun. So uh, maybe a contest about an ugly mug, an ugly mug contest, something that is not a good looking mug. So people will bring in mug gifts around that, something that could uh, make it more fun to bring an ugly mug than a nice looking mug. So we can build around that to make it funnier and also uh, give the information through laughter. I think the, the, the great insight about that is bring fern so that uh, it's going to create a better awareness and a better engagement. Thank yeah. you. Thanks a lot, both uh, uh, Benoit and Miguel. Good job. And of course, if you want to work with us, developing all these kind of ideas, we're going to ask for one of these later. Now, I would like Alejandra. I don't know if you speak French, uh, English or Spanish. Spanish? See, uh, uh, um, yeah, I won't be able. My Spanish is too old. Uh, <laughs> Take your in, in the interpretation works both ways. So she can speak in Spanish and you can put the interpretation into English. So you can actually listen. Ah, yes. Yeah, you can do Never that. Never done that. So okay. English speakers, you can click. So can you present your idea in one sentence and what you really like about it? Okay. Yo escogí el tema de eliminar los paquetes de plásticos de la comida. Creo que eso es algo que todos practicamos en las diferentes actividades que realizamos y creo que lo más importante es la prevención, ¿verdad? La prevención y la planificación. ¿Y la prevención en qué sentido? Prevención en priorización, en la comunicación clara, efectiva, como participativa, ¿verdad? Con, con las personas que lo vayamos a trabajar, ya sea con participantes, o sea, en nuestras empresas o organizaciones donde las trabajamos, ¿verdad? Y eh, preguntaba cuál es el mayor impacto, ¿cómo era? Eh, sí, el impacto, lo más difícil. Creo que lo más difícil es justamente sensibilizar a toda la, la población para tener una mentalidad consciente, que no es lo mismo que estar enterado de que existen eh, pues estos, estas dificultades, estos retos, sino que ser consciente, o sea, consciente implica ya eh, no hacerlo, dejar de hacerlo, digamos, ¿verdad? Te, te, esa, esa parte... That's super important. Very important. Thanks. Thanks a lot uh, for this first thoughts and first insight about this idea. We're going to very, go very quick. Of course, it's already two minutes past the time. So if you need to go, please go. And thank you very much for taking the time today. Uh, let's go to the next group very quickly. Either Anna, Brian, or Jimena. Uh, we'd like to say one thing about what is great about this idea. Brian, I invite you to talk. <laughs> kind of facilitated. I'll defer to her. Okay, so uh, we had great ideas about uh, recycling or reusing papers, using um, markers uh, that you can fill. Uh, yeah to fill the, using only that kind of markers and using the wizard wall and using uh, personal mocks and using papers for uh, creative activities like origami, for example, or using uh, natural leaves as paper and creating something beautiful and that something that can stimulate 
uh, creativity also. Perfect. It was Excellent. great. Uh, maybe one word, how does it impact the awareness of the participants? Do you do something special? Uh, 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 we didn't uh, talk a lot about it, but I was writing in the chat at this moment. What if we teach a group to a group how to use brainstorming, creating an initial brainstorm about how can we reduce our food carbon footprint okay. in this workshop? Okay, excellent. Thank you, Rimna. Um, um, we still have three groups. Um, from hard copy to digital, I see that there are a lot of things in your storms card. Uh, if you can try just to summarize that in 10 seconds. Can you do that? Yes. Mary, it was we... Juan and Marie-Hélène. Marie-Hélène, s'il vous plaît. Okay, so um, our whole thing was to talk about moving from hard copy information packets to digital. Um, so this would be the pre-read that often accompanies the kinds of things that the two of us uh, had experienced in our corporate lives. And so the idea was um, to really overcome the resistance that some of the participants might have to digital and to demystify that in a step by baby step process so that each participant feels confident. And that may include uh, budding up uh, people that are not as tech savvy with those people who are so that they can move entirely to reading and um, also taking notes all in a digital environment. Thank you. And we have a lot of notes uh, to make the most of this idea uh, position. Thanks a lot. Uh, I knew the two of you would, would make a great uh, group. Um, do we have um, uh, Alba for bringing topic at the beginning? Are you still here? Yes. Yeah. Well, for Can us, you make uh, it a, a 10 second highlight of this idea? Okay, for us, uh, the best uh, thing to, to do is uh, to have the engagement of participants. And if you ask from the beginning about it, you can uh, uh, be sure that uh, exit is going to be uh, reached. So all the other uh, ideas that you have uh, uh, said to us or that you shared with us, are part of this. If you start with this, all the others are going to flow. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I think it's one of the key things is involving people from the beginning. Um, last group, uh, I had Fabrice, if you want to talk, or Fabio or Brian. And it was about personal responsibility. But I, I, I'm, I'm probably going to ask Fabrice to talk about his idea because I, I really like uh, the concept of uh, sustainable uh, facilitator. Mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, I propose to to develop a, a sustainable facilitator position uh, yeah. to be able to uh, transmit to the people, uh, to the group, uh, what we are facilitating and how we do it. That's how I can explain uh, it. So it's, it's, wh what do you mean by it's a position of sustainable facilitator? You mean uh, when you describe yourself, you say, I'm, I work, I facilitate sustainability. No, it's more in the, in the way you, you behave. Mm. Uh, so uh, I really would like to talk more about that, but uh, we don't have time. Can, uh, let's hop on a call after that, if you if you want. In posture, in français, in développer la posture. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. So you you would add to the reference of what is a facilitator. You would has had this branch of sustainable approach, right? Yes. Yeah, that's really interesting. Hmm. Really like it. Sorry again, eight minutes late. Uh, yeah, well, you know, 
it's not like I'm a professional facilitator and how I know how to manage an agenda. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed the ride. Uh, thank you, Hector, for being with me. Thank you for um, uh, um, for uh, helping me with the timing. Also, I'm sorry, Hector. You're welcome. It's it's been a good. Uh, can we can we take a picture from all of you guys? Oh yeah. Put your both best profile for the picture. Smile. Three, two, one. Perfect. I okay. got you guys. So thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, if you want to uh, see if you have to leave, please leave. If you want to share a word before leaving, please open your mic and say that word. If you want to stay with me, and Hector, I don't know if you have a little time. Hector, I have five minutes if some of you want to stay and just say, I don't know anything. What are you eating tonight? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I just want to thank, I want to thank Juan uh, for um, a great breakout session, series of sessions. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank, um, you. Yeah, the, and thank you, Alex and Hector, for your generosity and insight. Yeah. Thank You're you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So we're okay. going to send an email and you get to, you're get going to get some news from us. Uh, next session is about hybrid. Uh, and also we are uh, uh, actively working on two big trainings, one on AI for facilitators and the other one uh, is going to be an in-depth stance training, the platform that you have used today. Um, I'm going to share all the tricks about using that tool. So but you're going to get some news by email. And if you want to join us, you can send us an email at any time. Thanks a lot, everybody. It's been great. Have Thank you. Great. Thanks very much. Have a good one. Bye. 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 Bye.